In this video, I've moved on to the folder part 1.1 curve fitting and the document within it, part 100 curve fitting.m. Link to the file is in the video description. And in this video, I'm going to talk about interpolation in MATLAB. And in the next video, I'm going to do all three of these topics, lines of fit, interactive curve fitting through the figure interface, and confidence intervals. And everything I show in these videos, uh, this one and the next one, except for the interactive curve fitting is going to work perfectly in Octave as it works here in MATLAB. And I'll mention that again when I get to this in a subsequent video. And get into interpolation here. If you're using the book MATLAB for Engineers 5th edition, this is in chapter 13, but that's not necessary to appreciate the content. All right, so uh, let me run this code and then I'll discuss it. And we have a figure that pops up right there. So I've got a vector x from 0 to 5, and I've got some arbitrary values that I'm going to call my y values. And this is what my data is. I am treating the x and y values as my data. And then I want MATLAB to take a guess for me about what the y value would be above the x location of 3.5. I want MATLAB to interpolate that data point. So what I say is interp1, that's the function, interp1, that is a 1 there, not an L. And then my x data, comma, my y data, comma, the new x locations that I would like to have interpolated. And the result that I get from interp1 is a new y value, or possibly more than one y value. And you can see on the graph the result here. It's just a basic linear interpolation. If you draw a straight line between the two nearest points, this green x value, the interpolated value, appears right between them. And I also want to mention that linear is the default. So this line of code right here is in fact identical to this line of code right here. You could specify a linear interpolation, but you don't have to. And we will see that there are also alternative options. All right, so then I just display it out and then I plot it as well. Just a little brief review of plotting. So I plot my X vector, my Y vector. I'm gonna make them circles, O, red. I'm gonna increase the marker size and the line width. These are independent things, right? The marker size is sort of like the radius of those circles or just like how tall and wide that X is that appears on the screen. The line width is kind of like how thick of a marker am I using? Like, am I using a big thick uh, felt marker to draw these on? Or am I using like a really fine tipped pen, right? So the line width is how thick like the lines of these markers are going to be. Anyway, you can play around with that and get different results. I use then hold on. And then I just graph that one X value that I want interpolated and the resulting Y value that I got when I plugged it in to interp one and I make it a green X. All right. And I can ask for many interpolated values. When I run this section down here, the graph is perhaps a little bit less interesting. So the red lines are connecting my data points, which makes it a little hard to see because I chose so many interpolated values. The black circles are my interpolated values. So I asked for new X values. I asked for predictions or interpolations at all of these X points from zero to five with a step size of 0.2. I plugged that into my interp1 function. So my original data, my original X values and Y values, and then my new ones, the ones that I want interpolated. And I get a vector of interpolated Y values, which I can then plot. Now I'm gonna use hold on for the next section of code. Um, but the code that I ran here, this one line of plotting, is equivalent to these three lines right here. And honestly, I think these are a little bit easier to read. But what I want to compare this to is the next section where I'm gonna do a spline interpolation. So instead of saying linear right here in the inputs to interp1, or instead of saying nothing at all, I'm gonna say spline. And so when I run this section, added to the red lines and black circles, I get this blue curve. And this is a spline interpolation. And which you choose to use, the linear or the spline or other options, depends on the context, it depends on what's appropriate. The linear is very basic, but that's sort of its advantage, is that it's very basic and simple and expected. But you might say like, well, most real world phenomena don't have these very sharp edges where it goes from one thing and then dramatically changes to another. Usually there's more of a gradual change of some kind. And so for that sort of data, for that sort of data set, you might want to use the spline interpolation. All right, here's just another interpolation example to see how it works. So very simple graph right here. Uh, I've got my X's and my Y's. This is considered my data. I just made up these numbers. 
And then I've got two values, two X values that I'm curious about. I would like MATLAB to interpolate these X values. So at those X coordinates, right, there's the 73 and the 85.6, interp1 is gonna generate Y values for me. And we see these X values right here. And since the default is a linear interpolation, they just fall along a straight line between the red circles. Now look what happens though, if I choose a value that is beyond my data points. So my X values are 60 and 90, but what if I change this to a 95.6 and rerun it? Well now, my output has a not a number instead of a proper number, and the graph just only has the one data point. So interpolation, the in there, the X values that we are asking about have to be in between the data that we have. If I'm requesting a value beyond the data that we have, that's extrapolation, and that's a different thing. All right, so I'll put that back and continue on down. Sometimes that spline interpolation is more appropriate and sometimes linear is. I kind of mentioned this before, so I'm gonna go over it relatively quickly. All right, so here is some data. It's like X values zero to 10 and a sine wave on those X values. And here's a linear interpolation and it's just basically straight lines between our data points. And that's fine. And if we don't know any better, that might even be the best thing that we wanna use. However, if I change from the linear right here to the spline right here and rerun it, we see something that looks a lot more like a sine wave. Now, in most circumstances, you don't have the benefit of just like knowing that you have a sine wave. And if you did, why are you bothering with an interpolation? But in this case, I just kind of wanted to tell you like, oh, look, doesn't this look much more accurate to what a sine wave looks like? And don't be confused here. This is not exactly a sine wave because the spline interpolation is calculated differently. It doesn't use sine waves to do it. All right, continuing on down here. So this is an example from MATLAB for Engineers 5th edition. And basically there's some data on temperatures and energy in some system. And so I've copied that data into these two vectors, T and U, T for temperatures, U for energy. Uh, I forget what the U stands for. And what I wanna make clear here is that the order of the inputs into interp1 matter. If I am saying that I want to know what the energy level is for a temperature of 215 degrees Celsius, I have to say in TERP1, give my temperatures, my energies, and then the temperature that I want an interpolated value for. So the first input and the third input have to have the same units is one way of saying this. Let me run this section. All right, runs off the screen here. The internal energy at 215 Celsius is this much energy. And then we're going to do something like the inverse. We're going to say at a particular energy level, what would we expect the temperature to be? And so at an energy level of 2600, I expect this temperature. But the way to do that in the code, you need to swap your first two values, right? I need to put in energy as if it was the independent variable and temperature as if it was the dependent variable to then get an interpolation for a value based on this energy level. Right? The result is a new T, a new temperature. So compare this line very carefully with this line right here. The first two inputs to interp1 are swapped. The first input matches the units of the third input, and the second input matches the units of the output. It's very easy for us to lose track of units, so I included this example for comparison so that you could look it over and, and uh, check where the values need to be plugged in. All right, and that's the end of interpolation, and we'll move on to curve fitting in the next video.